What I'm going to talk about today is um, about this uh, uh, brow group story. Uh, well, the work is uh, based on a joint work with uh, my ex-student Zhu Haixing and uh, Yerong Daryl. <coughs> so the work is uh, motivated by a recent work uh, by Edinkov Nikish and Austrian, and another paper by Nikish and uh, Davidov and Nikish. So let's start the categorification of the Picard group. Um, in the first paper by uh, Edinkov, Nik uh, Nikish and Austrian, and they introduced the brow Picard group, of a fusion category. Uh, in fact, you can uh, easily generalize this to the brown picard group of an any monoid category. Uh, in their paper, they prove that this group uh, is isomorphic with the automorphism, not the automorph, the auto equivalence and actually bladed out of the equivalence of the center. Ah, this means the all out of equivalences of the, the center of C, which preserves the braiding. Ah, and this is a very interesting result. And later on, so Davidoff, and Nikish extends this result to a finite tensor category. So they also have this Picard group of C. Yeah. And then they start also the subgroup of this group. Uh, when the category C is a braided tensor category. So in this case, if the C is a braided tensor category, you have here the element uh, generated by one-sided bimodule category, invertible bimodule category. So they have a, a subgroup, it's called the Picard group of C. And in this case, C is braided uh, tensor category. And then they come up with the equivalence uh, with the isomorphism, what is this group? is isomorphic with the auto equivalence group. Okay, it's a subgroup. Here is a subgroup of this brow picard group. And here also comes with a subgroup. What is that? And that is the center and the auto equivalence restricted to the base category of C is trivial. Ah. In other words, the outer equivalence is a C linear outer equivalence. So why does this work in, interest me? So I saw, when I saw this work, paper remind me of my, one of my work 15 years ago down in Max Planck, uh, and was presented in 1999 in the Messery Bakery meeting uh, when I started this brow group of a finite quantum group. And then I see here is a categorical interpretation of the, the group of bicolor objects. So, what is that? So, there I had this equivalence, uh, this exact sequence uh, for a finite dimensional quasi triangle Hopf algebra.
So I will explain this exact sequence later. Uh, and I see here the groups, they are very close with it. Actually, they are isomorphic. Uh, later on, we will show this. So this is the, the motivation that I come to look at this uh, uh, picture. So now I want to explain you what is this blau picard group. Uh, this actually, when you say blau picard group, is a categorization of, of the classical picard group. We know that if R is associative ring, uh, associative ring, this unit, okay, the picard group of R consists of isomorphism classes of bi invertible or invertible by R bi modules. Okay. So here we mean invertible by modules M is a invertible by R modules if there exists another by R module such that this is isomorphic uh, with R as a bi module uh, plus also N. Uh, so. What you can hear here is that it's a two side. Uh, so it says uh, uh. And when I is a commutative, and then you just look at the one side, uh, every one side invertible module is by, uh, is two sided. So the categorification of this Picard group, so you look at here, monoid category, and see it's a monoid category. Okay. And the analog of invertible by R module, and now become here the uh, invertible by module category. So we have to introduce what is a by module category. So it's a left C, a module category is a category M, and together or encrypt with a by functor or action C M to M and satisfy so you have associativity constraints A for instance X Y M so this I call here this tensor product is the action, okay, to, and here x tensor y, okay, and satisfy the Pendekin diagram, community diagrams, and then you have here the, co the unit action, so, this is a similar, and that's a left module category. And in a similar way, you can define right module category and bi module category. Okay. And what is a, a invertible bi module category? So, it's a similar definition. Yeah. It's a M is a C. An invertible C by module category. If there exists another N, yeah, by module category, and such as that M. Here you take the, the linear tensor product over C. And the equivalence, C, and plus another one. Okay. 
And so the categorification of the Brau Picard group of C, and that's the ISO classes uh, of all this, uh, and C by module category. But you have to module the Morita equivalence. Right. So that's the Brau Picard group. And now if if C is a braided, like the commutative ring case, okay, and then you have here a subgroup. So I denote by Picard. Uh, so which generated by one-sided, uh, one-sided and invertible C by module category. So this is a subgroup. Yeah, because C is a braided one-sided module category, be automatically become two-sided, and we are the braiding, yeah, like the commutative, uh, commutative ring case. So in this case, you have a, you do have a subgroup. So what is why is this subgroup interesting? Uh, interesting me because it's actually is the brow group. Ah, it's not because it's a brow group we started. So now we look at here. So adding of Austrick, the proof that, well, in the fusion case, but actually you can extend it to the uh, finite category. So here is once every element. Ah, a left C module category, M, is in fact uh, the representation category of some algebra uh, A in C. So in other words, this M is equivalent to the module category of an algebra A in C. So now you look at here, the, in, the definition of invertible. If this is the case, M is yeah, the representation category of algebra A in C, and then we have what is the opposite. Yeah? Uh, as you can derive from the definition, that the inverse, the inverse, so uh, here is inverse, is represented by M opposite category. Uh, so in the Picard group. Uh, and now if here M is this case, so what is the opposite category? Opposite category automatically from left to the right. So this is right, module category. Yeah. And use the braiding, and this is just C o opposite. And now look at the definition. Yeah? We have MN, so CA, tensor C. And here, you can see it's A opposite, right? Opposite. And this is equal to CA, tensor C. And here, CA opposite. And this is C, A, tensor A, opposite. So this is the representation category of the invariant algebra of A. And that's equivalent. And the other isomorphism, or equivalence, is C, or similar. We get C, A, 
opposite tensor C A is a opposite tensor A. So remember here in this category the tensor product is is commutative but only with respect to modules, not with algebra, monoids. So this is the definition of a bi-invertible modules. Now it comes to these two. Equivalence. And this is precise the definition of Azumaya algebra in embedded monoid category. So we do have the brow group of an embedded monoid category introduced by von Oystein and myself in 98. So this is Atsumaya algebra in C and the modular equivalence. So, the so bi invertible C module category are nothing but represented by Atsumaya algebra. Yeah. Uh, from the definition, you can also derive here the the properties that, so here M, if it's a bi, M is in the composable, and T, M is exact. So a category, a module category is exact. This means that if you have a, pro, a projective in C, uh, here's a projective object. And any object x in M, and the tensor product of the action is projective uh, in M, high in M. So this means that uh, uh, the projective object in C, x on any object in the module category, and you get a projective object. So that's called. Uh, exact uh, exactness. So, our Azumaya algebra, by definition, will be exact. Uh, exact. And, and we don't know that in any ge general ready monoid category, and is any Azumaya algebra exact? That we don't know. Uh, but the, anyway, and now we have this consequence: the Picard group of and breaded monoid category, uh, and breaded monoid category is equal to the Brow group here exact as Maya generated by exact as Maya algebra. Okay. So that's the the relation. And now I want to look at my case. This case. What is this brow group? This is the brow group of H Azumaya algebra. And in fact, here, there's nothing, I mean, special if I look at this. This is just the brow group of the H module category. And with co-module co structure induced by quasi triangle structure. So this is a breaded monoid category. And that's the brow group. And what is this group? And this group is the Picard group of the vector space. Yeah. And now, of course, you want to know. So every Azumaya algebra is exact uh, if and indeed, this is exact. So, this is the Picard group, and this is the Picard group. And now, what about this? Is this also the group that we know? Here is the Picard group. It's isomorphic with Braided out the equivalences of the center trivializable on the base category. 
So the natural question is, are these two groups isomorphic? Yeah. And that's what I want to, to explain. So, To explain this group, the GAL QC of HR, and this is called the group of uh, quantum commutative Galois objects. Uh, what is HR? What is HR? You have here the quasi triangular Hoff algebra. So HR is called the transmutation. of HR. So as algebra, HR is equal to H. But as co-algebra, we have to deform the co-multiplication. Uh, co so what is a co-multiplication? And this is X1, SR2, and tensor R1. Here, you take the adjoint action on x2 so for any x in uh, hr. So it's the, uh, you can show that this algebra is no longer an half algebra, but is a half algebra in this category. Ah. So it's got a braided Hopf algebra. And moreover, this Hopf algebra is co-commutative. What is co-commutative in the sense of Schauenberg? That's HR is not co-commutative in this category, but in the yet the trim field module category in the center, uh, the trim field center. And this means the tensor product, yeah, you have to uh, commute it with the half braiding. Or the half braiding here is actually given by the, uh, the braiding in the yet trim field module category. So it's a co commutative half algebra. Okay, now what is the point? Why do you need to, to start this one? And now we look at the Dreamfield Center, HR. So the interesting factor is, in this case, we have the Dreamfield Center of H is the co module category over C. So this is actually isomorphic. So C and HR. So here C is, ah. I haven't seen much this situation that the Trimfield center of a braided monoid category is a co module category over the best category. Uh, but this case is the, so this co module category is Braid it because you have this isomorphism, yeah, and you just the uh, you see that here the braiding induces a braiding here in the co-module category. Okay, now HR is a Hopf algebra in this category, and like the usual Hopf algebra in the vector space, you have Galois objects. Okay, so HR has Galois objects. And why you start Galois objects? I will explain it later. So here is A is right HR Galois. The definition is the same, ah, Galois objects. So you have here the canonical Galois isomorphism. 
beta So there's a right Galois and left Galois, and then it's a bi Galois. And why is bi Galois in, interesting? Because, uh, because it introduces an outdoor equivalence. So if A is an HR bi Galois object, and then the Q tensor product HR, and defines an auto equivalence of this co module category. Yeah. So, like the classical case, uh, this is a result of Schoenberg. Yeah. So, it defines an auto equivalence. But more interesting is this this auto equivalence. is C linear. Yeah. And that means when the equivalence restricted to the trivial co-modules or any object in C with a trivial collection and becomes identity, ah, identity functor. So it's a C, C linear. And now what is QC quantum commutative. Why do we need this quantum commutative? So in the first case, when I compute this group, I didn't know what, why do I need this quantum commutative. It's just because the object is commutative. Uh, I had no any interpretation of this commutativity. Uh, and Peter started this and, uh, and, and get more, even more understanding uh, in the braided case. So, why I need this color object, quantum commutative? So here, quantum commutative means that as an object here, it's also a Yadrin field module, and it's commutative in this category. Ah, so I don't write anything down. So here, quantum commutative, what does it mean? Quantum commutative. So we worked it out. So here, A is embedded. So it's out of equivalence, but it doesn't mean that it preserves the braiding. Yeah? Because our category has the Jimfield center has a braiding. Yeah? So this is a braided, means it preserves the braiding of the center if and only if A is quantum commutative. So that's the meaning. Yeah? So then I know that here, this functor equivalence is in fact here in that group. Yeah? It's a braided out of equivalence of the center and it's a C linear. Means, yeah. So, as a, a consequence, we had this group QC of HR is a subgroup of the automorphism group, uh, uh, or the equivalence group of the yeah, the Dunfield module category. And here is H uh, trivializable. And of course, you are not satisfied because you just get now here is inclusion. Yeah? And basically, you want here equal, right? And indeed, uh, they are equal. So thanks to uh, a really hopeful discussion with Peter and valuable suggestion from him. And we worked out that here is indeed the two groups are equal. And why? And this, we need the Morita equivalences. So, 
the cars go by Galawa Seri, yeah, walked by Peter Schoenberg. So we have here, if here is a co-module category, and the two co-module category for two half algebras are Morita equivalent, tensor equivalent. So if and only if there exists a bigalova object. Bigalova object. And such that here, what well, you have F, such that F is given by this cotensor function. Okay? But this is if and only, only if in the classical case. And of course, now you expect that our category, what is our category? And that is C, HR. Okay? And C is the best category. And this is Hopf algebra. And our equivalence is here. Yeah? So this means if we have any braided out of equivalence to realizable on the best category is given by a bicolor object of HR. That's what we have to work out. Yeah? And we have here a general result. So actually, this gives the congress uh, of the Schoenberg theorem. Uh, so suppose here, so let's see, be embedded a monoid category, okay. Uh, here I want his strict, uh, strict monoid category with equalize, equalizes, okay. And suppose that B and L are uh, two half algebra in C. And here F is an and C linear functor. And satisfying a, well, a commutative diagram, but I won't uh, write it down. You can find it on uh, the paper on the on archive. Uh, uh, so this means the diagram means this functor commute with with the braiding, uh, with the braiding. Okay, and then f of b is a first for flat Galois object. Sorry? Oh, functor, yeah? It's a C-linear functor satisfying commutative diagram, certainly. Okay. Uh, F of B is the first for the flat color objects in C. Yeah. And actually it's represented by F of B. So here's from B and M. So, so the function is indeed 
uh, given by um, by color of objects uh, in this general case. How do you see? Sorry, in equivalence function, of course. Otherwise, you won't get a by color of objects. Yes. All right. So now, going back to our case. Yeah. C. Now, HR. And in this case, the diagram here, this commutative diagram is automatically satisfied. So we can get rid of this condition. Right? And, and then we have here every, every auto equivalence, braided auto equivalence of the center. is given by an HR by object. So we do have here the equivalence of the isomorphism. So they are equal. And so now come to our here the original point. Okay. Here use the so they do isomorphism. Uh, so last point we have here is a map is a pi. Uh, and of course, you could apply introduce here a map from this Picard group to the auto equivalence group. But on the other hand, as I mentioned here, and David Dorff and Nick also has have isomorphism. And at this moment, we wouldn't work out the two morphism are identical or coincide. Uh, because they use categorical definition. Uh, but as you see that if K is not algebra algebraic coarse fields, we do have a kernel here, so that isomorphism doesn't hold. Uh, but of course, they take the algebraic coarse field, okay? Uh, and we are, we were not able to prove that this sequence, uh, this morphism is subjective. If here is there is isomorphic, then we also have here isomorphism. Yeah. And that's what we are going to work out it. Thank you. <laughs>